good morning what a wonderful morning to have you my dear audience uh to this show why in the morning my name is grace Mangi, standing in for valentine and of course this is your daily show um that's coming up at y254 and uh, today we have a show lined up for you and i'm excited about this show in particular because we are going to be talking about matters safety road safety and with me in studio i have a uh, dr duncan kabogong who is the deputy director road safety programs and um public education thank you so much Dr. for making time for us karibu sana to the studio asante asante sana thank Just you just just to start off the show i will uh, yes, ask you to kindly uh, kindly introduce yourself to our audience right and of course touch on what the mandate of ntsa in terms of road safety right, Sana. right. thank you so much thank you so much uh, uh grace my, uh, for for inviting me to this show um, uh, my name is uh, Duncan Kibogong. Dr. Duncan Kibogong works with the National Transport and Safety Authority as the Deputy Director in Church of um, uh, Road Safety Programs and Education. And, and, and uh, I, I think NTSA is fairly a well-known name in this country for uh, one reason or the other one. But just for your viewers uh, to get to know about this is that um, NTSA is a government agency. And it's a government agency established through an act of parliament, uh, uh, sometimes back around 2012, 2013. And uh, we've been basically in existence since then, after having been established by that act of parliament. Our role really is, uh, if I put it broadly, is that we are the lead agency on matters of road safety. Lead agency means that um, we bring so many other stakeholders on, uh, onto the board and working towards improving matters of road safety and road transport in this, Ken in this country, Kenya. Now, uh, just briefly, part of the work we do so that Kenyans get to know is that we, we, we register motor vehicles in this country because um, we are basically the registrar of motor vehicles, uh, keeping the list and the registry of motor vehicles in this country. So we provide those number plates, we get to know how many vehicles are in the country and that kind of thing. We check also the issues with motor vehicle inspection, ensuring that vehicles in the country are, 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 are inspected, especially in currently working with what you call the PSV, those are the matatus, and the heavy commercial vehicles, those are the lorries and the pickups and the rest. And then three is that we do a lot on matters road safety. Of course, I've talked about the motor vehicle inspection being part of it, but we advise the national government on matters touching on road transport and road safety in, from a policy perspective, uh, so that they come up with the right policies for that matter, informed because we are the experts on that. We work on matters road safety strategies, including this public education, including such a program. Uh, we also work, uh, part and parcel of our work is that all the matters touching on the driver. And here you are talking about uh, uh, having the curriculum for driver training, testing, and licensing is something we spearhead together with stakeholders so that we have a, a, a standardized best curriculum for this country for training you and me and many other Kenyans and indeed even non Kenyans to ensure that they are better drivers. Then we, of course, oversee the whole aspect around uh, driver training testing and licensing and we license the driving schools and coordinate so many aspects on matters road safety. So when you talk about one of our roles is to coordinate actors on road safety, including the media houses like yourselves, including the 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 the, 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 the PSV sector and NGOs, the, the development partners. Basically is whole matters touching on road safety. So that's our role as NTSA and and and, and NTSA works with many partners and, and, and the overall objective and part and parcel of our mission is to ensure that over time we do have improved road safety in this Republic of Kenya. Thank you so much for um, bringing that light, shedding yes, light Chris. into mm. what NTSA does. Because a lot mm. of people out there, when mm. they hear NTSA, they just hear uh, NTSA and then you hear Kushikoa, you know, mm -hmm. the common Mwanainchi. Yes. Uh, from mm. the perspective of the common Mwanainchi, mm. is that when a common Mwanainchi hears NTSA, yes. if I use the layman's language, I can hear NTSA, yeah. Anaskianga Kushikoa, Anaskia ni Al -Koblo, Al -Koblo. you know, mm. those are the things that S NTSA uh, is mm. particularly associated with. Mm. But um, today's focus of this uh, discussion, I would want us to talk about Usalama Barabarani. Mm -hmm. Why do you think uh, the death tolls are increasing every day on our roads? Yeah. Particularly, um, mm. before you answer me, particularly, we have a rising number in the country of de death tolls uh, pertaining to uh, road accidents and all that, but it's prone to there are counties that are very notorious. Mm. That is Nairobi, Nakuru, mm. Kisumu, 
mm. Kericho. Mm, mm, mm. Why do we have those rising death yes. tolls? Uh, uh, um, uh, Grace, now, uh, matters, when you talk about uh, uh, crashes, indeed, uh, road traffic, uh, it is, we've noted the numbers are high. And the distribution are, as per what you've said, we do have some other counties with a uh, high number of road traffic uh, deaths and injuries and crashes uh, as compared to others. We also do have some certain roads which have more deaths than others. So, so, so uh, the reason being that uh, a crash does not happen in, in, where there is no vehicle or where... Uh, um, so, 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 for example, if you do not have a vehicle, as a matter of fact, there will be no road fatality for that case. If there will be no road, there is no... So, uh, so, so three things usually have to interact for, uh, for a crash to happen. And that is a vehicle has to be there, a, a road user, a human being, me and you, and, and, and the road. So when those things conflict in a particular way, then uh, uh, the, the road usually is usually the one who is more vulnerable among the two, among the three. So in the long run, they suffer an injury. And if the injury is severe, that's when a death fatality, uh, fatality happens. So those, th those three parameters, we call them a triad, have to happen so that a crash happens. So what is happening in bigger areas, or rather the, the particular counties you've mentioned, is that we have a high number of uh, vehicles, for example, in the city of Nairobi, or the, the Nairobi city county. Uh, we do have many roads, and we have also a high number of population, that is the road users. So those conflict one with the other on the roads, and the numbers are high. But um, uh, we are not saying that is the right thing to happen. Road traffic crashes are preventable. And indeed, we do have uh, other parts of this country, and indeed even parts of the world, whereby they may have similar number of vehicles and number of cars, uh, a number of vehicles and number of roads, uh, or even population, but they still have them. So we do have some Nairobi, for example, uh, Nakuru, uh, and, uh, and, and we have major highways on some of those roads, and that's why we have uh, those number of fatalities. Then I would also say that why we've also, also noted the increasing number of, uh, that is because there has been an increase on number of vehicles, especially the border borders. If increased, and uh, that has been, an, uh, I can say, an emerging challenge. An emerging challenge meaning that uh, you've noted that uh, border borders have a special challenge, like the riders are not trained, they have not majority of them, up to 60-70%. And this way, you are working with many people and partners to push this particular group to go to driving, so to be trained, riding, so to know how to ride, and to become better road users. So that's what's happening. And that informed the whole aspect about the EU Usalama uh, program, which is currently running and supported by the Euro European Union and the government of Kenya. And we want to drive the agenda of road safety. We, the expectation in the long run is that we reduce this number of fatalities. And currently we are working with some of those counties, which you've mentioned, about six, and pilot areas. But that doesn't mean that we are not doing anything elsewhere. We are doing a lot across the country. As a matter of fact, even this program we're having currently spills over into the youth across the country and, uh, and, and they, so that we become uh, better road users. So, uh, um, Grace, to, 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 to bring your point home is that indeed the numbers are going and we always say one life loss is one too many. It's unacceptable. I this deaths every day. And the truth of the matter is your viewership are the ones who are affected by this problem. Uh, I'm told that your viewership is of the younger generations, and, and, and this is where the catch is. And from a, a global perspective, 15 to 29 year old, the number one killer is road traffic injury in, 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 in the world, beating more than HIV beating more than COVID and many others. So this is uh, something you'd want us to address. And I'm happy to be here to talk day in and out around this problem all the the week so that we have better you audience and you'll be addressing your show tomorrow. The same audience we, uh, we, we talked to today are still there tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, mm. If I can pick something from what you've said. Yes. You've said that you are doing Usalama Barabarani as an initiative. Yes. Would you be um, kind enough to expound more on what 
exactly yes Salama yes so so it touches on a number of areas uh, uh one uh, i'll start with what you're currently doing for example what you're doing is to increase the level of awareness and education levels among us road users in this country uh, whereby we'd want road users to understand uh, matters road safety and not just understand but shift their behavior from just not uh, having the knowledge but having a behavioral change to have better road use, and that is number one. Number two is that we are working together with the county governments of those particular counties to see how we can work on what you call county transport and safety committee for purposes of improving road safety. Remember, uh, um, road safety is not a government function alone. Neither is it an NTSA function alone. It is everyone's responsibility, including county government, national government, and, and, and I always say this is an area everyone uh, asked to play a role for purposes of sustainability. So that is one of the areas supporting the county government. We work also to improve on matters touching on, 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 on um, unsafe roads in terms of the so-called black spots by the engineering aspect. Remember, the roads at times have been identified to know, so we want to identify all these black spots and what are the treatments. We call it from a road safety treatment. What are the mitigation measures? What are we going to do to make a road which has classically been unsafe to become safe from an engineering point of view and then the whole aspect of course of capacity building uh, um, areas uh, uh, within NTSA and, and many areas so that we have better understanding and better ways of managing this uh, emerging problem. Dr. Yes. Um, who are who, who can we say yes. are the most notorious? Because yes um, yes uh, the, I, I, I well I'll put it this way uh, the people we've I'll, I'll start from a statistical point of view, that um, if you check our statistics last year, the number of road users uh, who get killed more are, are pedestrians, uh, rather are, are motorcycle, motorcycles, both the pillion passenger, the pillion passenger is the passenger of a motorcycle, and the rider. Like last year, we're talking about up to 40% of the deaths are caused by a motorcycle then closely followed by a pedestrian which uh, around 34 percent so we are talking about 70 plus percent being the so-called vulnerable users that is the the, the motorcycle and the, the, the motorcycle rider plus is or a passenger and the pedestrians so those are the people who have killed more does not mean that the i i the word notorious is that because they are caused by other vehicles as well We've noted that increase border border because of the increasing number of border border in this country and, 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 and coupled with a number of issues, non training, their bad behavior in the road, not putting on a helmet while, while, while riding, both the passenger, overloading. At times, you see up to six, seven, you know, human beings on that two, three meter type of um, a vehicle, that is the motorcycle. And in case a crash happens, then you have massive. Remember, when you're always on a border border, the point of contact or impact in case of a crash is your body, unlike for a, a, a vehicle, because the other one is more protective. But nonetheless, those are the, 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 the areas which you've um, noted that uh, they have a high number of fatalities. And, and, and also the private vehicles, we've seen me and you have increasingly becoming more careless on the road in terms of speeding, drink driving, tailgating, overtaking dangerously, uh, driving for so long as so that you, you, you get fatigued. And those are some of the challenges you're talking about. So, uh, but nevertheless, we be, uh, we were working to, uh, and we, I, I rally everyone, we want all of us to rally on this particular course so that we work towards including matters around. Um, I would really want to ask you what NTSA is doing to mm. curb um, the border border, the rise of border border cases. Yes. But um, let me uh, push your focus to something that I saw happening. Mm -hmm. uh, just the other day, I saw border border riders um, registering. They were being told to give a hundred bob to register their border borders and the stage they work uh they work at like mm -hmm. you know if i work at uh, let's say i am in town cbd and my station or my stage is in um, ajib 
you register, you pay a hundred shillings. Is that an initiative? One of the initiatives that it no, 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 no. The initiative we we, we actually conducting the registration, but ours is that we, we don't do that by payment as you talked about because we believe that is not the type the right approach. I I I I love to get details around who that, but likely those are the the so-called the, the border border associations or otherwise circles which they operate differently for their own. But what we are doing as a government. And this one, you are working with the uh, Ministry of Interior, the Ngao structures, right from uh, a national level, all the way to the um, the to 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 the assistant chief in every sub location, is that we are registering these people and we have put a platform whereby there is the registration. Why we are doing it is because one, we need to get to know how many border borders do we have in this country, because some are fallen aside, some are coming into the game. And so that we understand the, 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 the in terms of quantities. Number two is to know where exactly they are. Number three is we are trying to work towards having these groups uh, put into what you call circles and companies of a minimum of 100. The whole idea here is to ensure that we work towards self-regulation in this sector. Uh, uh, self-regulation means that it cannot be and it will never happen whereby government will be uh, police in this sector 24-7. We want to establish a mechanism among us, each of these groups, knowing that they exist in Budalangi, for example, or in Mandera, how many they are. And then we establish also the level of uh, their licensure, or put it the other way around, whether they have been trained and licensed. So much so that if we get to know that in, in Machakos County, for example, we have 35,000 motorcycle riders and 32, uh, say 20,000 have not been trained, then we work towards putting them into a training regime because we have a program, we are working with NYS and other stakeholders and other driving so, so that we train them to become better riders. But uh, whatever was happening you, you, you mentioned is that's not ours is going on, it's, uh, it's actually an ongoing uh, exercise. We've registered a number of them and now working towards analyzing those statistics for purposes of understanding uh, those er the, 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 er the issues I talked about, where they are, the distribution, the locations where they are, whether they've been trained, what can we do towards working them. And then further in understanding that we can even go and capacity build them you know that you are dealing with um, Y24 Sako in, in, in Kitui County with a membership of 50,000 riders. And that provides a platform whereby we can engage formally uh, and, and, and capacity build them on several areas, including talking to them like we are talking now. So that's an initiative which is ongoing. And we believe and we think that is how we're going to move forward as we talk even to them through such platforms like the ones you provided today in the morning. So it is safe to say we still have some way to go when it comes to Buddha Buddha. Yes, yes, we do have a way forward. Indeed, there was a, um, a, an action plan around the same. So there's a whole way forward. We are quite um, cognizant of the fact that this is an area which has to be handled. It cannot be. The issue is that for a very long time, uh, 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 we've nothing much has been done, but we have action on the same. And it's not just on safety issues, by the way. Uh, if, you s if you hear that um, in this country, um, if you read anything criminal or crime for that matter, you'll realize that the investigative agencies will tell you that a border border plays one or the other, whether it's carrying a, an arm, whether it's carrying illicit alcohol, whether it is, you know, anything, some, whatever it is. So there's some um, attendance of this sector, and that's why government, we are quite clear that we need to have this sector not uh, uh, at our chest, so to speak, so that we work towards improving their life. It's not about chasing them and, and whatever. It is about embracing and letting them improve on their, their capacities, right from how they behave on the road, how they build their, their circles, their entrepreneurial skills, and working towards a safe sector in a regulated manner. Um, let's just shift our area of focus a bit to mm. this this vulnerable, I'm, I'm calling them vulnerable, yes. uh, category of people, uh, the school school buses and school transportation. Mm. We have seen crashes involving school buses mm. and issues around it. What is it, what is NTSA doing about it? Yes. We know you, mm. you, you, 
put in place this uh, yellow buses mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. Is that enough? What are you doing? Correct. Yes. Um, yeah. Now that is uh, an issue which uh, I know. And uh, just to bring that point home uh, for your viewers, is that for some of us who are parents at this particular time, schools are closing for a short term period, uh, about four or five days, and you'll be seeing a lot of movements within the country. And it's our, our hope and prayer that um, the safety on our roads is move along. Yes, indeed, school children are classified as, as, as or rather children for that matter, are classified as vulnerable. The vulnerability is because of some of the areas, we call them shortcomings, not really shortcomings, but because of, 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 of their nature. Issues to do that their, their attention is quite poor, uh, not enough, their judgment of speed or distances is a bit low. Their eyes, basically, from anatomically, or the way they are, is that they cannot see. If, I mean, they are. They, they cannot. They may not be seen. That's why at times you see parents even reversing on their children because even if they check the side mirrors, they can't see. But the child is right behind. You've seen this unfortunate cases happen, among his others. So we reckon and recognize and and, and 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 that this team or this cohort is special and vulnerable. And being special and vulnerable, one of the places we target as, uh, as in their safety is the schools. Uh, the, the majority of children in this country spend in excess of about eight, to about, about eight hours or so in schools, depending on which level or grade you are in or class you are in. So uh, school safety is very important, very paramount. And school safety are on two areas which we're going to talk about briefly. One is that we reckon that there are children who walk to school, come out for lunch, at, in the afternoon they go back and they come back in the evening. So making four trips to school and, 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 and competing with the traffic as they go and back in school uh, is a potential area of conflict in, and that conflict there are of conflict with vehicles but the border included then there's a likelihood of the injury of the vulnerable road user. what does that mean mm -hmm. it means that we need to improve our transportation of children from and to schools whether you're walking or you're using a school bus majority of kenyans of course do walk to schools uh, in excess of 90 percent but you've also noted an increase of vehicles going to schools uh, uh, schools providing vehicles now, our programs which we are currently working on and would encourage even KBC to do this and many other stations and many other Kenyans for that matter is the very simple, um, non-expensive, inexpensive intervention. We call it helping children cross the road. And you see children, uh, the school is on the other side. There's a road here of even if it is a single lane or double or at times even multi lane like some of the highways in the country. We need just Kenyans to stop, let the children cross. When you see a marsh, we call them a traffic marshal or a, a, a guard for that matter, to help the children by raising stop sign. You come to stop, let the children take their very short time, actually not running. It hardly takes less than five minutes to help children cross. Not even one minute for that matter. And these children will be safe when they are going to school and back, and you can be sure they are going to go back. It's quite unfortunate that at times, and then two is the school transport, which you mentioned about. We've done the pain, the, and we are working towards having even the issues, because we've seen in the recent past, school children are crammed into space of, um, if it's a space of 14, we've been able in the past able to count in excess of 45 out of that. What does that mean? That is cramp. It's actually even uh, a child abuse, so to speak. So those are some of the things we are working around. But as you said, road safety is not a government agenda alone. It's everyone. And that's why we are imploring upon the school communities, working with the Ministry of Education and other stakeholders to drive the agenda. And we have the Tuvuke, uh, uh, Tuvuke Salama project. We are currently working with one of our partners, Vivo Energy, and bringing other stakeholders for purposes of improving road safety. Uh, for children when they're going to and coming out of schools uh, and uh, considering that they are vulnerable uh, Kenyans. We have seen NTSA do a partnership with police um, mm -hmm. enforcement uh, mm -hmm. uh, programs and mm -hmm. all that. Yes. How would you explain your relationship with the police? How do you two work? Uh, uh, police, National Kenya National Police Service is, is, is uh, the enforcement arm of government as per the Constitution of Kenya. And anything law which needs enforcement is the National Police Services do. 
part and parcel of our work as the regulator in this field is to provide support to the National Police Service, uh, information or otherwise, or data or otherwise, so that as they enforce, they ensure that it's data-driven and research-driven, or rather um, uh, evidence-based. So, what does that mean? We work with the National Police Service, they are our partners. And we work at times, uh, and most of the time, we have what we call joint operations, whereby we want to check a vehicle in terms of the, the regulatory requirements, including whether a vehicle has a license, whether the driver has a valid license, whether uh, the vehicle has a certificate of, uh, uh, of, of inspection, um, motor vehicle inspection certificate, whether they are operating the right to some. So we do have those joint operations and we work with them very closely. And they, 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 they do quite a number of work around the same. It's just that Kenyans at times, we, 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 we need to appreciate that we don't need to be chased around by the police. We need to be more responsible, and police will, 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 we want them even to be out of the roads if for that matter in terms of because we have, we have better behaviors on the road. So yes. So in the past, yes, um, <laughs> yes, Grace, in the past that we have seen, uh -huh. we have seen, you know, there is a way that um, mm. we, someone is used to doing things even at home at, yes. at your house. There is a way you're used to doing something, uh -huh. and uh, there is a way you prepare for events, ceremonies, and one of the particular uh, things that. Uh, we have taken note of uh, particularly is that NTSA does a lot of campaigning during festivities, during mm -hmm. Christmas, mm -hmm. Easter mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. But lately we are seeing a lot of campaigning uh, going around and it's it's a low festive season. Mm -hmm. Is it a change of strategy? Yes, or? yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you're right. Um, um, Grace, this is um, uh, the whole direction we are moving into uh, and, 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 and we look forward to partnering with every other partner, including the, the fourth estate. Um, we have to, we'll have this as uh, in a sustainable manner, done throughout, uh, and not just on those festivities. Why we are doing that time is because those are the high risk seasons. So remember, December uh, naturally, uh, rather not uh, traditionally, have been associated with all number of crashes on have uh, been elevated, and many other holidays because of this increased movement. But this activity we're going to do is going to be. Um, all throughout the phases of the year and we are not going to we are going to work with all, everyone so yes so that is the direction we're moving into um let me ask a particular question that um mm -hmm. i've been wanting to ask mm -hmm. we have this class of people we call pedestrians mm. sometimes they're just walking by the road and fatalities happen and they're taken by the road how can they protect themselves? Because you know, someone is walking, they're just taking mm. a stroll, mm. or someone mm. was just walking to their work, they weren't particularly inside the road, or you know, katikatia barabara in common Monenchi's language, mm. but they happen to be, um, they happen to get into an accident. How yes. can they protect themselves? Uh, yes, I'll, 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 I'll put it this way that um, the sustainability of that pedestrian is from a number of areas. I'll start first from a behavioral aspect and not just for the pedestrian because a pedestrian, another pedestrian cannot kill another pedestrian. That's one thing you need to do. Even if you knock yourself, uh, one moving in the opposite direction, uh, that naturally nothing happens. A pedestrian is killed by a vehicle moving at speed or a motorcycle and whether and could be killed when they are crossing the road or at times away from the road you're buying your sugar again and eating then a vehicle comes by so the sustainability of pedestrian safety is on a number of areas one is behavioral on both the pedestrian yourself and the road the the the, the, the vehicle the vehicle and i say the vehicle i mean the rider so to start with on the pedestrian pedestrians you need to be careful remember that you are extremely very vulnerable being hit at as little as 30 40 kilometers per hour is a potential death so uh, at times people think that it's the huge speeds of hundreds plus which kill pedestrians actually it's that little because it, the impact on the body is, is you are actually directly on your flesh whether it's in your chest on your pelvis or your, your head or your legs so that's why pedestrians remain extremely very vulnerable because of the openness now so the behavior is ensure you always um, um, if, if there are pedestrian facilities to use use them here we're talking about foot bridges I've just come from other studio and to have been told one of the uh, viewers uh, mentioned about a row, uh, 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 some some foot bridge in Bagadi which is not used people walk and yet there's a very beautiful friendly uh, modern 
a footbridge which has been set up by one of the road agencies, but it's not used. Now, so work using the pedestrian facilities uh, which are available, whether it is the, 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 the footbridge, in some cases underbridge, uh, in some cases the, 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 the pedestrian walkways, in some cases even the, the, the zebra crossing. So that's when you use, that's number one. Two is that you'll be visible at times at night, you'll find people uh, doing a joke and they are dark. So all of a sudden, and that's why at times there's that provision in some cases, even a single s belt of a reflective material uh, would always save you at times. And then three is that as much as possible, don't cross the word jaywalking, you know, carelessly. Five is that um, as a pedestrian, you've seen pedestrians killed because they drink and walk and cross a, a highway like thicker road. So drinking, of course, impairs your performance on the road as a pedestrian. So that is one. But that's what the pedestrian needs to save themselves, use those facilities. Two is for this other person, speeding and, and many others. But as government also is that we want to work towards improving and increasing and enhancing the facilities okay. of the pedestrians. Dr. Yes. I am being told we're short of time. But I would want to ask a question, yes. a pressing question that I would want you to answer in a very, in a, in a, in like right. 30 seconds so Thank that you. I, we wind up. Um, I want to pick a question from one of the things you've said about pedestrians using footbridges. Yes. Safety in those footbridges has been one of the major issues why pedestrians have been reluctant to use them. Correct. Does that fall on your docket or on the police in just a short time, in just a minute? It falls uh, on virtually everyone. I'll say the fact that they are dirty, there are people who are making it dirty or unsafe. That and is the one. aspect of thieves too. The thieves, of course, that is something which you are working with the National Police Service to ensure that, uh, and, and also including the county governments who are like in Nairobi, to ensure that there's safety there. But also, modern footbridges, if you've seen, they are more open, they are lit, so that it discourages the same. But we also need to get those reports of some of those areas so that we tell the police to improve the safety of those, uh, the security aspect around the same. You had mentioned, you had talked about um, Usalama Barabarani Correct. program. Mm. What, it, what is its implementation strategy and how is it be going to be of benefit to the user? The benefit, the overall benefit of this is improvement of road safety. That's what I can say, simply speaking. But one of the things, of course, is that we are working towards improving the behavior of the road user, whether whichever road user you're talking about, and, and, and also improving the road infrastructure facilities in terms of treatment of the black spots, which I had mentioned before. So those are the potential benefits of this particular program. But as I said, this is a short term, one year, two year, but we do have, we need to have these things in a sustainable manner. And the overall thing is that Road safety is everybody's responsibility. It's your responsibility, Grace, and responsibility of everyone. So let's play that role and, and, and not letting it that it's just a government agenda or a government, uh, you know, function. As, um, as your parting shot, I would want you to tell us, how can we all share in the responsibility of keeping our roads safe? How can the viewers, how can the viewers help NTSA keep the roads safe as you wind up? Yes, um, I'm now speaking to the viewers that as Kenyans, uh, at any one point you are a road user. As a matter of fact, every time you get out of your bed, you are a road user because you'll be walking on the road as you go to school, as you go to work. So safety has to move from being a government function, from being the other person's function, to your function or to your responsibility. Push safety to become your responsibility. And if all of us choose to become on the safe side, then we do not need even NTSA for that matter. We'll close shop. Why I'm saying so is that um, uh, uh, um, if you walk, if you are a pedestrian, you do the right thing. If you are a passenger, you make sure that you report in case of a crash, in case, in case of a behavior which you find it not wanting, speeding, driving dangerously. If you are a driver, don't drink and drive and many other things we've always talked about. So it's important that all of us to abide by the laws and, and with that case we'll have the reduced number of road traffic crashes in this country. And, and we'll be far safe and, 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 and that is my, my, my message to the viewers of Y24, especially your special listeners and viewers of the youth population, mm -hmm. the future of this country. This country depends on you. Let's not keep on killing ourselves on the road because of something which is totally and purely preventable. Actually, you don't use, it's not an accident. It is something which is purely preventable. 
So that is my message to your Thank viewers. Thank you so much for As making Sante time Sante. for us. Mm. Thank you for being here. Mm. Dear viewer, you have heard it from Dr. Uh, Duncan Kibogong, uh, the Deputy Director uh, Safety Programs and Public Education. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening. As you have gotten it from him, it is my mandate, it is your mandate to keep our roads safe. Have a good evening, uh, have a good day, sorry, and um, let's meet tomorrow here. Same time, God bless you.